SpaceX, Starbase, Cape Canaveral. You've got questions, we've got the answers. Thanks for tuning in to episode 90 of Lab Padre SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's dig in. Less than two hours after the launch of Starship's second integrated flight test, SpaceX workers returned to the launch site to begin assessing the state of the pad post-launch. At the pad, workers began inspecting the area and clearing debris from Highway 4. While there was still some debris, it is worth noting that there was not near as much as after the first launch. A short time later, the chopsticks began lowering down the launch tower. It was a welcome sight to see them functional so quickly, well under half an hour after crews arrived at the pad. Following roughly an hour of inspections after the workers reached the pad, the area was deemed safe and the sheriffs removed the roadblock and reopened Highway 4 to the public. A look around the launch site showed us that while Stage Zero handled the raw power of the launch far better than it did during the first integrated flight test, there was still some minor damage visible to the site. The launch mount and surrounding area appeared a little charred, but structurally seemed to be holding up fine. While the chopsticks are still apparently functional, several wires could be seen hanging off of them. Up the tower, the ship quick disconnect interface looks a little worse for the wear after a piston seemed to fail, leaving the entire assembly leaning heavily to one side. Along Highway 4, the long skinny building next to the guard shack had parts of the roof ripped off, likely by the booster shockwave. Overall, the site looked to be in pretty fair shape, especially compared to the aftermath of the concrete tornado from the first launch. On Sunday afternoon, crews began putting scaffolding up around the top deck of the launch mount as they rapidly transitioned into repairs and refurbishment to prepare for a quick return to testing. That evening, Booster 11 was picked up by SPMTs at Massey's and began its return journey to the build site. Upon arriving at the ring yard, it was soon taken back into Mega Bay 1. About an hour later, one of the Mega Bay bridge cranes was moved over the top of the booster and workers quickly connected it to the Super Heavy. The booster was then lifted off the puck shucker and transport stand and moved to the newest engine installation stand in the back corner of the building. Meanwhile, a ship and a booster transport stand were spotted arriving at the launch site. This is likely just for a temporary storage as there are currently no vehicles at the pad. Back in Mega Bay, once Booster 11 was secured to the engine installation stand, the bridge crane was detached from the top of the Super Heavy. Next, the launch mount work platform arrived at the launch site. While this might also be for storage short term, eventually it will likely be used for refurbishment work on the mount. Crews continue to make steady progress on the current phase of the Star Factory expansion. Only one side remains open to the elements on the taller nose cone end of the building. Inside this open end, we can see the bridge cranes that will be used to move green sections within the hall. Down at the launch site, crews are back to work at the new gate and walls at the entrance to the test stand tank farm. After the removal of the forms for the concrete beam that will span the driveway prior to the launch last week, work is now back underway to prepare for the beam to be poured in the near future. Crews have also painted a section of the curved wall facing the wetlands black, possibly as part of a sign that would face people approaching the site on Highway 4. Late Monday afternoon, Ship 30 was rolled out of High Bay and into the ring yard as SpaceX began shuffling their starships between workstations. This gave us a nice look at the ship and its nearly completed heat shielding that looks noticeably nicer than what we saw on Ship 25 before launch. Back at the launch site, the quick disconnect arm was rotated back into its normal position against the tower, the first movement we've seen from the arm since the launch. About an hour later, the chopsticks were raised and briefly put through some tests before being closed and returned to the stop at the base of the tower for the first time since the launch. At the build site, with Ship 30 out of the way, Ship 31 was rolled out of High Bay and sent on its way to the Rocket Garden. At the same time, Ship 29 was moved out of the Rocket Garden and rolled down Remedios Avenue towards Highway 4 as the vehicle made its way back towards High Bay. 
Then, in front of the build site gate, Ship 29 passed by its younger sibling, Ship 31. It then returned in and also passed by Ship 30 before finally heading into High Bay. Once Ship 29 was off the highway, Ship 31 continued on its way down the road before taking the Rocket Garden parking spot that was just vacated. With Ship 29 now secured in High Bay, Ship 30 was moved out of its temporary spot in the ring yard and parked back inside of High Bay. Overnight, the Orbital Launch Mount Raptor installation platform was relocated from Sanchez back to the launch site as SpaceX continues to move equipment back to the pad, seemingly for storage. At Massey, SpaceX continues to work on developing the testing facility. The new warehouse and office building looks as if it should be ready for roofing and exterior closing soon after the installation of its bridge crane. Behind the building, we can see a continuous flight auger being used to add stability to the ground at the back of the site. Over at the tank farm, a new horizontal cryogenic storage tank has been delivered in recent weeks and is waiting to be plumbed in. Tuesday afternoon, the new black stand, likely a next-generation booster transport stand, was moved out of the Sanchez site where it was built and into the ring yard across from Mega Bay 1. This new stand, the first of at least three that SpaceX is building, is much more structurally robust than the current transport stands. Most importantly, however, it appears that the new stand has 20 booster hold-down clamps that should be mechanically actuated as opposed to the hand-operated clamps on the stands used now. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, two deliveries were made to the orbital tank farm area. These were likely new valve and other piping accessory assemblies that were prefabricated outside of the new building that was recently built next to the former tracking station. Since the new building was finished, SpaceX has been assembling and storing prefabricated sections of cryogenic piping and associated hardware there for eventual installation at the launch site. Now that the second flight test has been completed, it seems that workers are focusing on the expansion of the orbital tank farm during the downtime before the next launch and its associated vehicle test campaigns. That afternoon, the new black stand was on the move once again. After a little less than a day in the ring yard, it was moved back down Highway 4 to the Sanchez site. The stand was later moved to the rocket garden and set down next to the booster thrust simulator. Once the stand went by, the Starship shuffle began once again as Ship 30 was rolled out of High Bay and into the ring yard for the second time in two days. Meanwhile, down at the launch site, a new guard shack arrived at Gate D2 on a flatbed trailer after the old one was apparently damaged during the launch. The new prefabricated small building was quickly offloaded by the truck and left on the former landing pad. A telehandler then picked up the old guard shack and loaded it onto the back of the now empty delivery truck for transport away from the launch site. Finally, the same telehandler picked up the new shack and moved it into position at the opposite side of the gate from the old building's location, completing the swap in under an hour. That evening, over at the Rocket Garden, Ship 28's forward flaps were folded in and secured as crews prepared to remove the ship from the engine installation stand. Once preparations were completed, the Black Buckner LR-1750 crane picked up Ship 28 and transferred it onto a waiting transport stand. Then, on Thanksgiving morning, Ship 28 rolled out of the rocket garden and made its way to the build site, where it was taken into High Bay. Once in the High Bay, the ship was parked in the front right corner of the building, likely for final checks and finishing work, before it eventually heads to the launch site for engine testing. Once Ship 28 was securely parked inside, Ship 30 was moved from the ring yard back into High Bay and parked in the front left corner. With this move completed, there are now an astonishing four starships crammed inside of SpaceX's smallest remaining vehicle bay. Switching over to Florida on Saturday morning, just after the Starship launch, Falcon 9 Booster 1076 was transferred from a short fall of Gravitas to the dockside stand. By that afternoon, it was back to work for the drone ship as Crosby Skipper towed it back out to sea in support of the Starlink Group 6-29 mission. On Sunday evening, Bob returned to Port Canaveral with the four fairing halves from both the M Power 5 and 6 launch as well as the Starlink Group 6-28 mission. 
After less than 12 hours in port, Bob headed back out to sea to join Crosby's skipper and a short fall of Gravitas in supporting the next Starlink launch. On Monday, tug Signet Titan towed just read the instructions into port with booster 1069 following its launch of the Starlink Group 6-28 mission a few days before. That evening, dockside processing of booster 1076 was completed and the Falcon 9 was lifted from the stand and placed on the transporter. Shortly before 3 o'clock local time on Wednesday morning, Falcon 9 Booster 1067 launched its 15th mission as it sent another batch of Starlink satellites on their way to low Earth orbit. Later that morning, the dockside crane lifted Booster 1069 from the deck of Just Read the Instructions and placed it onto the stand for processing. On Thursday, Bob returned to Port Canaveral once again. This time, however, the ship carried only one fairing half from the Starlink launch, with the other apparently having been lost. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.